All right, traders, let's get started with today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, September 7th. Well, some uh, pretty easy themes of the day, a little bit different than what we've seen in the last uh, over the last week. Um, we will go over those in just a second. First things first, risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer right there. So for the day, <clears throat> we might as well go over the performance because again, um, a little bit different and uh, uh, than what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we had SPY up 1.8%, Q's up 2%. And um, and there came the small caps there at the end of the day, too. Those were both up over 2% for the day. Um, finally, we get a relief bounce <clears throat> in some things like bonds, which you know have been heavy, heavy under pressure with rates going higher for the last couple of weeks. You know, those have been, um, you know, prices have been drifting lower and bonds um, pushing, you know, interest rates higher. That's been the trend um, along with uh, equity sinking over the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks. Um, the VIX was down again, you know, pretty interesting. Uh, I, I wasn't going to start with the VIX, but um, I wanted to cover that too. But, you know, this stalling out at 27, I thought it was interesting, right? Um, you know, despite a lot of doom and gloom on Twitter and in the, you know, in the financial press, um, the VIX never really got to levels that we saw previously, uh, you know, earlier in the year, which was, you know, in between 30 to, to 33, 34. Um, so I, I thought that that, that was telling that, um, you know, we kept stalling at 27. Um, a couple other things I, I mentioned bonds, I'll get to the dollar as well. So no major trend change here in bonds. Uh, you know, we bounced, right? And again, this has just been going straight down, uh, you know, basically since the beginning of August. So um, that's been, a, that's more than a couple of weeks. That's actually been a month. So I, I would like to see a little bit more follow through from bond prices to go higher. Um, for now, you know, no trend has been reversed, um, you know, just a bounce, right? Um, AMD, I'm uh, sorry, not AMD. Uh, <laughs> AMD's on my mind for another reason. UUP, um, the US dollar had a big reversal today, right? That was the main thing when I woke up this morning, I heard about dollar yen, I heard about all kinds of dollar strength. It's funny when that happens. It's almost as if the news gets saturated with something that has been moving up for a while, right? Um, sometimes it's the eureka moment when everybody's talking about currencies, sometimes they actually start to go the other way. It's the whole thing with, you know, what's on the Barron's cover or what's on the Economist, right, is sometimes very, very late. And the move is already complete. So um, again, no major trend change there, but that looks like a reversal bar. We'll see if we get follow through from what appears to be a reversal bar. Remember, sometimes these candlesticks can have ugly one day candles, but if there's no follow through or no breaking of the trend, nothing to see there. But again, good to see considering that the dollar has been so strong lately. Um, and then finally, you know, crude was a big one too. Right. I've been talking about this since the end of last week, saying saying I think this crude looks like it's trying to break down. Um, sure enough, earlier in the week when we got all that news about what's going on in Europe and um, you know, energy quotas and um, you know, all kinds of things going on in, in Europe in terms of power generation, right? That, you know, you didn't see crude jump higher there either. So, you know, finally we got the breakdown and we got a pretty decent breakdown. We come down and take out this version point of control. Now this is implications, right? Now, again, um, you know, when they look at CPI, PCE deflator, when I say they, the Fed, right? Um, that's, there's a lot of things like rent that are a big component. Um, commodities are definitely not the only component of um, the inflation measure. But um, it will have something to do with it. So crude going down, you know, hopefully we see uh, gas prices continue to go lower. But that's a nice break of this um, of this range. And, you know, this takes us all the way back to where we were in the beginning of the year. Right. So um, very interesting to see that. All right. Let's get to, to equities and the indices. And I'll go over through some charts really quickly. I have to make this a shorter uh, video than normal. But um I will certainly go over um, trades and so forth today. But um, so here you go, right? So I, I thought that we would come down and take out this 
this version point of control. Um, as I said in the pre-market commentary at Tribeca Trade Group, that this didn't need to be taken out, right? It's not mandatory that this get, get taken out, um, but it got so close. I actually thought it might be taken out in the overnight session. For now, we're bouncing and we're back above the five period moving average. It's the first day above the five period moving average, but um, you know, so far I'm just kind of thinking of this as a bounce right now, right? Keep in mind that we have, we've got Powell speaking tomorrow. So um, another thing that I like to do is have a level where I'm going to be, you know, play a bounce versus know that it was just maybe a one day bounce and it may be coming back in. Right. So that level for me is going to be thirty nine fifty seven. So if we can maintain um, a, inside the value area for the week, notice we're kind of butting up against this trend line, which is the 200 period moving average, which is acted very, very well. And it's why I have it on my charts. Right. When we were moving up, we had a test here. Um, test and hold. We tested here as well. Then when we finally broke this, right, after about, you know, what, a month of going up, we had a retest here and a fail. Um, and this is the second test. So we'll see too early, right? Too early to tell what we're going to do here, but a lot of participation in the market. So we'll go from there. Like I said, I, I saw a lot of, a lot of nice things on the tape today, but one day is not a trend. Um, I do like that we did manage to get inside value. Um, when we look at NASDAQ, right, we paused right at the bottom of value. All right. So again, we'll see if this kind of entices a little bit more buying. There's probably a decent amount of short covering um, today as well, right? Because we've basically been going straight down, right? Um, Russell Futures, I think are, were a little bit stronger. They did get back into value. Um, but I think this was the seventh day that um, IWM, or sorry, it broke the streak. There were seven straight days of IWM being down, right? So um, this is the first day that breaks that streak. All right. So, you know, again, we'll look for more follow through tomorrow. Um, the way that I basically talked about trading today is that if you're trading some things for a bounce, you got the bounce and you probably should be, you know, again, I'm not giving out any advice, but probably should be take, you know, taking off names that you're just in for a bounce. If you're in for a, a different type of setup where it's a good looking trend and a dip in an uptrend, then it's something else. Um, by the way, the sectors for the day, super, super hot and solar. Um, very, very bright. Sorry, that's two bad jokes in a row. Um, biotech really came to life today. This was not performing until, you know, really the middle of the day, right? This is a group that I really want to see continue from here, right? Gets you back to the 50-day moving average, bullish engulfing, and we'll see if we can continue from there, right? It's a good start. Um, to see and very nice to see biotech participate. All right. Um, consumer discretionary retail was very strong. Um, I like names like, you know, names that had really good earnings. Look at what Deckers did today. We talked about this name on Friday, right? I was a little bit early with this, but here you, here you go. Here's your level to watch, right? 339.43 price stopped right at the top of value. So very interesting. Um, again, talking about some other names, the difference between names that had good earnings versus, I mean, look at what uh, BJ's Wholesale did today. Huge move, up 4.3% today, right? So again, you don't have to be all that clever or, or find like, you know, the new shiny, you know, software name, right? Um, you know, something like this, really nice performance out of this. Um, for me, you know, if you go to my trades, right, this is something that, you know, I've been, we've been all over for a while, which was the move in, in ENPH. It took a little while to materialize. It almost broke down. This is sometimes what happens is you get kind of a test like this, shakes people out a little bit. And I got into this yesterday before we even saw any call buying in it, but it was sure nice to be in a position and then see the call buying um, that I went over in yesterday's video. And, and this broke through that 299 level that I mentioned in yesterday's video. So very nice. Nice. This was our kind of stock of the day yesterday. Um, also for me yesterday, you know, it was a question of how many names that I wanted to own, but I talked about Ulta too, right, as a possible breakout, which is very difficult in bear markets, but uh, you got it today. So I actually sold into the strength today. Um, I kind of wanted to keep a piece on, but I didn't want to be overly greedy. Um, then another one too that I was looking at and I took off because I didn't want to start three new swing trades yesterday, but LNTH had a real nice move too. Another name that continuously has been having strong earnings, strong trend, right? While we're in this space or while it starts with an L, 
and I get these symbols confused a lot, but LTHM, a name that saw option activity too, right? Which I think we went over in yesterday's video. Really, really nice too. So this this was a nice day for, I would have liked to, to hold on to that last one, the LNTH yesterday, but that's okay. Um, ENPH, um, and I even tried a couple other trades in the beginning of the day. It just, they weren't ready to go yet, but here's my Ulta. Um, Ulta again took out the high, you know, uh, I took this trade off, um, still holding on to ENPH, right? And I originally, you know, I kind of finagled with this one a little bit. Um, that's a very technical term, by the way, but I got into this at 285. And then I kind of added back once I saw the strength, right? Sometimes you have to do that, right? Even though you're taking profit targets, um, you have to, you know, change your mind to what the chart is telling you. And I really, really like the strength um, and the, vol and the uh, volume. I can go through a number of other solar names, but I, I think you kind of get the picture, right? Very strong. Here's the solar ETF uh, bounce where it needed to also at the 50, you know, right around the 50 day moving average. All right. Um, a few other names just to go over very, very quickly. Um, I'll start with CSL, right? This is another earnings name. You know, I decided to get involved in this one. Not a huge move today, but I like how it's above these uh, short-term moving averages. Um, Montauk, right? This is a name that people have been, um, you know, have their attention on a little bit. Very, very strong. Again, it's more in the renewable energy type power generation um, area, but um, a nice bounce on the 20 day moving average. I did take a position in this one at the end of the day. Um, also, I mentioned biotech, right? Very strong. Um, C CPRX, right? Which again, sticking with the same thing, right? Strong earnings, consolidation. And then when the markets goes, this thing really goes up 8%. Same thing with TMDX, which has been showing relative strength for a while now in, in um, the biotech area. Very nice in that one. Um, also, if you wanted to add uh, an EVH in here too, um, that made new highs as well. Very, very strong for e, uh uh, EVH. Um, Palo Alto, I, I tried to trade earlier. I liked, I think I talked about that in yesterday's video. I took this thing off, but it worked for a day trade. Um, 542 is your resistance. So I would watch out if you're still in that one. And, um, you know, a couple of even things like this. Um, another one, right? GPC had huge earnings, right? Genuine parts continue to go higher, digestion, and bam, when the market goes. So I'll leave it there, guys. Um, there's plenty of other charts that we could go through, but um, I, I think that's good enough for now. Um, just a reminder, if you're not a member of the Tribeca Trade Group, um, click on here on my uh, pin, pin tweet um, on Twitter, and that'll take you here. Um, again, I encourage everyone to check it out for a month, right? And uh, let me know what their feedback is, right? Again, I'm, I'm always trying to stay ahead of the curve, try to find some new things. We, we talked about for a while, you know, one of the things that um, got me, you know, to basically stay on my toes looking for longs was looking at something that people weren't looking at a few days ago, which I think I was one of the first ones to look at, which is this NIMO. And I kept posting it saying, hey, this is really oversold right now, this market, all right? So it, it was due for a bounce, all right? And now the question is, we got the bounce. Are we gonna see some follow-through? So we'll be all over that tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.